Hey, we're at the Varsity in Baton Rouge with Front 242 Project Pitchfork tonight. And uh, here we have, give them your introduction. Hi, I'm Patrick, Front 242. And these guys, the last time we saw anything of them was end of 1994. And we've kind of been wondering what happened to them. Was it all over anything? But no, they're doing a tour again. They brought Project Pitchfork over with them. I guess the first thing is, is what have you been doing since 1994? I mean, it's been you know, a couple of years now. We needed a break. It's, um, it's a band that's like 17 years old. So we've been like through that electronic music movement since ever. And uh, since technology has changed, people just felt that they could experiment stuff on their own. Everything is more flexible, technologically speaking. So um, we all worked alone. Some people just experimented. Some people did some solo projects. And, for instance, yeah. And um, after a while, we, we wanted to come back on the scene with the logo Front242 uh, to experiment new stuff. But we have chosen to do it live as, as first introduction. That's excellent. Uh, I mean, the, the other first thing is, what's with the hats? I mean, we remember these guys with the uh, the big goggles and uh, all the industrial gear and everything. It's, uh... Well, I, I think that um, a band has to move with its time. Um, at the time, we had those goggles and those sort of paramilitary uh, costumes or, or outfits were, was the time where uh, there was a strong tension between East and West. Uh, this is all over also. Uh, we, we have developed more personalities within the band and uh, we, we don't feel it's still very coherent on stage as a matter of as we are presenting the band but it is not that discipline as it used to. Here's one I like asking like of all I'm gonna throw you in a category here because most people will all the uh, the, the early 80s industrial crowd and everything mm -hmm. around that time this may just be my personal opinion but it, it was very much about reflecting stuff that was happening at the time mm -hmm. in terms that looked a little more futuristic and everything. This was pre-internet days and when the technology was very sort of embryonic it was we knew it was going to become a big thing and everything. Yeah, and it, was, yeah. it was totally linked with a, a, a real technology which is the sampling. Actually the, the samplers, those machines that were taking uh, audio samples from anywhere uh, were developing and it, it kind of led to a certain type of music that was picking their sounds from TV, from uh, uh, movies and stuff like that. So the technology was very linked with that, that way of working. That's why you, those bands were using like a lot of uh, uh, phrases and, and, and words and, and specific voices. Uh, but nowadays that technology has evolved again and, and yeah. people rediscover old analogic sounds and, and, and it goes somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing is that <coughs> there's a lot of stuff happening now that you can, you can look back to sort of artists and musicians in the early 80s and they were basically writing about stuff that's happening now back then and almost sort of predicting mm -hmm. it. Again, that sort of cyberpunk influence with the validity. Yeah, the I, I think also at the time in the 80s, the effort had to be like much stronger. Mm -hmm. Not only because people didn't accept that music, not everybody would assimilate that kind of music, uh, but on top of it, the technology was so square when you listen to the first record with it, and, and even now we've kept that, that sort of of square feeling, it's uh, you have to develop an aesthetic that, that's linked with the machines you're using. So in the early 80s, uh, that futuristic vision uh, came also through the fact that you had to work much harder on ideas rather than the possibility to really do good songs or good music. Uh, trivia question here as well, do you remember the days of one word, one word title tracks and everything? Oh yeah. And yeah. Like, that, was, that was definitely a, a, a sort of not an important it, part, but it, w it was always there. You knew it was going to sound very electronic when they had one word as the title to the track and everything. Yeah, definitely. It's, 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 it's the way people were working at the time. We were spending hours on, on a bass drum or a snare drum. Uh, today, you just pick one on a Prince record or whatever, mm -hmm. and you got it. You know, So it's, people had a very narrow vision of things. It, it was, it's funny. When you look back, uh, it, it had something funny, but something very true at the time. So, we had the interview with Curve, they were out since about 1994 as well. It's, it's interesting that um, there's a lot of bands from the early, that disappeared for a while in the early 90s, that are actually now coming back and everything. It's, it's, it's very satisfying in some senses. Saying I that, think it's yeah. a matter of ways also. I think that at some point in the beginning of the 90s, uh, especially in Europe, 
uh, techno music was really taking over. So you had that kind of cheap techno uh, that was going to the mass yeah, cool. stupid stuff. <laughs> uh, but thanks to a lot of, of, of bands like maybe the Prodigy, Chemical Brothers and a lot of other bands, uh, techno went back to a more underground feeling and now there are more harsh and nasty sounds in techno. So it's time for other underground bands like Fun242 to, to come back to, to to join a movement that makes more sense today. In terms of like the political situation that really sort of motivated underground electronics, industrial and everything else during that time, late 70s to sort of the end of the 80s, coming back now, it's about fall of the Berlin Wall and everything else, getting on almost the end of this decade now. I mean, how's, how's the actual sort of political motivations and stuff for that change now? With well, I think that industrial people have, in general, a pessimistic vision of the world, uh, which is not necessarily negative. It can be very critical, actually. Uh, and since the 70s, there is industrial movement with Cabaret Voltaire, Throbbing Gristle, all those old craft work, all those bands were there. Uh, and and the, I think the way to the angle that they that they have to uh, uh, to do their music is always doing music with a lot of criticism. They're very analytical in the way of doing music, and I think it's uh, it's a quality, and it, it should last. So how is some of your newer stuff going to, what's it going to sound like, and are you guys going to play new stuff today? Well, the, the option we have taken is, is um, I know that industrial music in, in the States is it's got like a lot of those guitar edges, and, and it's probably because of a very strong rock inheritance. Uh, the way we have decided to, to go is to have a beat, strong dance beat mixed with a very uh, harsh um, industrial sounds. So it's going to be a sort of industrial dance. Um, I can't remember her name, the female vocalist on um, During Evil Off and oh, yeah. Upheaval. Is she still Christine. with you? No, she's not. Uh, this is a one project girl. A lot of people really like it. Yeah, that was really like, good. Man. Um, there was there was a remix album from there that I've, it was released for like a really short time and never got a copy of it. It's very hard to find. Yeah, yeah, it's a school piece. Yeah. It's very hard to find that. Yeah. I have the to video to. for Animal. We played it on the show. Do you? Yes. That, that's rare. Yeah. <laughs> this is something that's been bugging me in my head for ages. Um, do you remember a magazine called Boing Boing? No. Um, oh. It was it was is based out of. Oh, it's, it's from Austin, Texas. No. They were, they were some of the early writers of Wired magazine, back in the days when Wired was really counterculture, not just a white middle class techn technology professional's basic tech wank mag. Um, there, was a, there was a quote from there, I'm not sure whether it was from you directly or from someone else. Um, so I don't know, where does, where does art is not a mirror, art is a hammer come from? Sorry, I don't get the question again. Art is not a mirror, art is a hammer. Oh yeah. Who said that? Who said that? I don't know, it's not us. Ah, oh, right. But it's a nice, nice I know. quote. That's where, that's <laughs> We've been trying to figure out who said it. And it, it's, yeah, that's been floating around my brain uh -huh. for a few years, definitely. That's interesting. I'd like to find out who did that one. That was a good one. Um, oh, well, you guys have just had a, a live album come out. What's, um, what's the next album that's going to come out, and what are the projected dates for that? Um, well, one, one of the reasons why uh, we released the live album is because, um, for us, there Okay, when you're an artist and you're uh, doing records, there are different ways to, to handle a new situation. Uh, you can either go in a studio and work for months and, and come up with some uh, uh, album, or you can also go on the road and try to check out what's going to be the people's reaction. So what we've done is we've been working for two and a half months in studio. We have remodeled most of the tracks. and. Uh, we have put like a lot of new um, ideas in, in the set, and what we're doing actually is, is, is checking a little bit what's, what the people' reaction is because uh, putting dance beats or, or more upbeats in, in industrial music is not obvious. So this album is kind of a test, and uh, it's going to be the base for an eventual uh, new album. <laughs> There's one question I sort of asked you, again, of all bands that get grouped in the industrial thing, especially if they've been around since the early days, pre-1985, is that at its time it was very much a, a new way of thinking about how to do music, mm -hmm. especially the era of Throbbing Gristle and everything, that, that quote, uh, for the first mistake people make about us is that assuming we're a music group. Um, 
industrial today has become very homogenized and that it's it's not so it, it, it's definitely become sort of a blanket term and it fringes over with everything else. There's less research. Yeah. Um, in, because of all the technology and everything now, we've explored so much in terms of actual sound. I mean, that's a great thing. They were, they were removing all inherent melodies and everything and, and rethinking ways to use sound. I mean, in your opinion, have we explored everything with that? Are we now just oh, like... No, I, I no. Think, I think what happened is that a few pioneer bands uh, in the late 70s and, and during the 80s developed a certain different styles and it was very creative and there was a lot of research but like any style the industrial style start to have their stereotypes yes. cliches and now you can almost build a, an industrial song like you can build a blues song or yeah, a rock song by numbers. and that that's the problem because you, you you stick to a formula like a recipe and a lot of young bands instead of experimenting like to me what that's the purpose of the genre yeah, and instead of that they, they want to quickly go to a certain cool. success and yeah. they, they sound right and the technology is there for them to sound cool in that matter because the recipes exist but of course there's like a huge world of, of electronic music that's open and, and that's why I believe I, I'm still wanting to do so, music yeah. today. There, there's, yeah. the, the, there's still potential for... Oh, definitely. Like industrial came up out of a sort of anti-music, there's room for that to happen mm -hmm. again? Yeah, it, it, we just have to carry the idea. We have to forget about, about the, 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 the facts and the results. We have to carry the idea and try to develop new genres, new styles. Right? Great. Okay. Thanks for having me in You're welcome.